All right, good afternoon, everybody. It is uh, six o'clock and I'll call the 17th regular Common Council meeting to order. Will the clerk please state the quote of the evening? If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. All right, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Ackley? Here. Decker? Here. Feldy? Here. Filiki Panensky? Excused. Heidemann? Here. Mitchell? Here. Corella? Here. Rami? Rust? Here. Salazar? Here. Alderperson Rami? She online? She'll be excused until she joins us. Oh, she's on. Oh. Alderperson Rami? She appears to be online, so we'll proceed. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Now we can. Thanks, Angela. There are nine. Okay. I don't think my camera isn't working, but I can hear you. All right. If you're able, can you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Alder Feldy, is there a motion to approve the minutes from our previous meeting? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I move to approve the minutes from... 16th regular council meeting held on November 21st, 2022. Second. Motion second. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Any objection? Minutes are approved. All right. Next, we have appointments. City Attorney. Thank you. The mayor hereby submits the following appointments for your confirmation to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District Board of Directors for the 2023-2024 term. Paul Rudnick from Rudnick Jewelers, Eileen Simmons from Salon S.A., Stephanie Rankin from Mini Mocha Cafe, Greg Van Demark from Local Press, Tim Bartz from Parker Johns, and Derek Mink from Shoreline Metro. All right, and those appointments will lay over. Next is confirmation of appointments. Uh, Alder Feldy. I move to confirm. Second. Then a motion and second. Need discussion. And before you do that, oh. I'll just read them. Uh, <laughs> so the mayor submits the following appointments for your confirmation. Oh, Cheryl Zone to be considered for appointment to the Sustainability Task Force and Cleo Messner to be considered for appointment to the Redevelopment Authority. All right. And there's been a motion and second for confirmation. And this is a roll call vote. So please refer to your muni codes. There are nine ayes. All right, that's approved. Anyone for public forum? There is no one this evening. All right, all right. Uh, number seven, we have the 2021 audit by Baker Tilly and we have a Wendy here um, as well. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Wendy Unger. I am a partner with Baker Tilly and the individual responsible for the audit uh, for 2021 of the city of Sheboygan. Um, in front of you today and within your packets, you should have had a uh, handout, which I will use to go through the, the documents that were issued as part of the audit process. You should have also received your audited financial statements, a reporting and insights document, and a report on federal and state awards. And again, I will use the handout that you have in front of you to address uh, some high level items out of all the, of those documents. I do just want to mention before I get started that this is a little bit delayed compared to where I'm sure you've had this presentation in the past. As you can imagine, a first year audit is very labor intensive, a lot of things to, to work through and um, to uh, address. So we're a little bit delayed, but we will get back on track um, with your normal schedule in uh, the next year. So uh, very quickly, we'll be beginning 2022's audit. So starting with the presentation, uh, the very first item noted there, um, the objective of the audit was to render an opinion on the financial statements of the city. We've done that and included in your audited statements is a clean 
unmodified opinion. That is the highest level of assurance that you can obtain from us as your auditors. And that clean, unmodified opinion means that the financial information included within your audited statements is believed to be materially accurate. All disclosures that are required to be included under our standards have been included. We follow generally accepted accounting principles and accounting principles have been consistently applied from year to year. So there were no new governmental accounting standards or GASBs, and we'll talk about those in a moment, but um, GASBs effective for the city for 2021. So a, a very normal year from new standards standpoint. Um, before I switch to some financial information, just wanna quickly touch on the other documents. You are required under federal guidelines to have what's referred to as a uniform guidance audit. That's an audit of your federal programs. Um, because you expend over $750,000 in federal funds, you're roughly about $4 million. Um, during 2021, because you expend over seven fifty, dollars you are required to have an, a compliance audit. Programs are evaluated annually based on dollars in risk, and programs are tested. Uh, the t uh, programs that were tested for compliance with the federal requirements for 2021 were your CDBG uh, program and your CARES funding that you received. Um, both of them, no findings of, uh, from a compliance standpoint. So a very positive result um, for those. We also, because we live in Wisconsin, we need to have state compliance audits. So um, we are required to look at various programs, again, looking at dollars and risk. And we audited the transit aid for 2021. Um, that's included within your 1.5 million of uh, state aid that you receive. Again, no compliance findings. So a very positive result within your uh, federal and state compliance work. Um, the reporting and insights document, again, that's a document we use to accomplish a, a couple different purposes. Uh, that document we use to communicate any comments or recommendations that may come up as part of the audit process. We use that to share any uh, material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. We use that to communicate any best practice type items. Um, so just a couple items I wanna highlight out of that report. Um, included in there, there are material weaknesses. So a, a material weakness is when there's a internal control uh, deficiency that could be uh, cause a material misstatement in the information that you are provided throughout the year. Um, during uh, the audit process, one, we become part of your internal control structure for a short period of time because we prepare your audited statements. Um, so we as your auditors become part of the process. We also prepared the schedule of federal and state awards. Um, also during the audit process, there were some reconciliation type items um, that were noted from the standpoint of making sure your subsidiary records were in line with your balance sheet accounts. So looking at receivables um, and the various balance sheet transactions uh, that you had. And again, we've included those in that report as material weaknesses. Uh, these items that we've noted um, are not unusual or uncustomary for organizations um, such as the city, um, but we have included them in, uh, in the letter and management ha has already began to work at addressing those that they can from a cost benefit standpoint. Um, also included in that letter are some other comments and recommendations more uh, from an IT best practice standpoint. Uh, being a first year audit, we always do a, a really uh, uh, in-depth review of the information technology system that's associated with any accounting transactions. Um, so your financial reporting, um, evaluating again for any type of control issues. And there's some best practice type recommendations, but nothing that raised to a level of a material weakness. Um, there's a portion of that report that is um, very standard and customary communications that we need to have with you. Again, nothing unusual in there, but we do reference an appendix to that report that highlights the material journal entries that were done as part of the audit process. So I encourage you to, to take a look at that. That's towards the back of that report. And then there's other communication, as I mentioned, we use that to communicate any new standards or best practices. There is a new governmental accounting standard or a GASB that will be uh, effective for the city for 2022. It's GASB 87. Hopefully it's not the first time you're hearing about it. It will uh, take a lot of work. It's uh, changing the way the city accounts for leases both on the lessee and the lessor side, and I know that management has obtained some software to help them accumulate that data. So uh, stay tuned on that. Uh, we'll not change how you manage your organization, but we'll add, add some additional footnotes and uh, some additional information on your top side statements. 
Um, switching gears then for just a, a few minutes, just going through some very high level financial information. On the second page of the handout, I presented a budget to actual comparison uh, schedule for your general fund, your day to day operating fund. Uh, just a couple of items to note there. Um, that very first column is your final budget column. So this is after any type of amendments. The second column is your actual. So that is what your actual results were. Um, and the very final column is the variance between uh, your final budget and actual. I will note that on page eight of your audited statements, this information is in much more detail. So if you're someone that likes to look at that, I will give you a few page references as we go through. Um, couple, again, highlights your revenues, as you can see in that very top row, very close to budget. Um, you are $39,000 under budget, um, very, uh, positive situation when you think about your investment income. Investment income, you budgeted roughly 250,000 of income. You actually had a loss of 88,000 just based on market um, situations during the year. Something to keep in mind as you're moving in or through your budget process for the year. Your expenditures came in 3.66 million under budget. So very favorable variance within your expenditure categories. Couple different reasons for that. You had roughly $556,000 of contingencies that you budget for, did not have to use that during 2021. So that, that falls into a positive scenario. Also had some lease uh, principal and interest payments included in your general fund of roughly 1.2 million, didn't have, uh, didn't enter into that lease during the year, so you had no actual. And then uh, you had various salary categories, both within public works and finance that were in under budget just to, due to positions that were not filled. So again, very favorable variance there. So when you look at that total column in the middle, the actual, you actually added 350,000 to your fund balance in your general fund when you budgeted to use in your final budget almost 3.2 million. So a very positive result, a positive swing of roughly 3.5 million. When you look at the next page, I've included that at a very high level summary, but then uh, the important part to look here is in that second uh, portion of that table at the top is your fund balance. So you added 350,000 to fund balance, you ended the year at 23 point, almost 23.2 million of fund balance within your general fund. Not all of that is available for spending. A uh, couple uh, different pieces of that, 125,000 is what's referred to as non-spendable. Those are monies that have been spent on inventory type items and prepaids. So those sit on your balance sheet. They'll get recognized as expenses in 2022 when they're used. You had $350,000 that's committed for development. 1.7 million is assigned. That's what you utilized originally in your 20, uh, 2022 budget to balance it. So we set those monies aside because those are not available for spending. The remaining portion, 20.9 million is your unassigned. This is your working capital, your con again, contingency money uh, going forward. You do have a policy to maintain 25% of your subsequent year operating budget. That equates to roughly 10, um, 10.4 million. So you have sufficient reserves within your unassigned category to cover your policy, but also to have some additional monies available as needed. I presented seven additional funds here. Again, just gonna hit a couple points on uh, a few of them. Uh, the second column there, just wanna quickly, that's your ARPA funding. If you remember, you got two tranches of roughly 10 point some million. Um, as of the end of 2021, you had spent some of that, roughly uh, 410,000. You'll see the revenue that's recognized is only 283,000 and that fund is showing a deficit. Important part to keep in mind there is, the, uh, the aid uh, that you got is recognized in an equal amount to the expenses. However, that fund also shared in the investment loss. So you have $127,000 of investment loss in that fund because you had a lot of cash in there. Um, but again, that shows as a net effect until you recoup those monies through uh, transferring the revenue. So again, that's a deficit, but it's a deficit because those are the investment earnings slash loss that were uh, recognized. You still have 10.4 million at the end of 2021 that is sitting in your balance sheet as unrecognized revenue for spending. You also then received your second tranche of funding in 2022 of a, a relatively similar amount. Uh, the next uh, three columns are your capital projects funds. Um, the only thing I'll note there, you can see the various activity um, that's included from a revenue and expenditure standpoint. Um, your TIF districts, uh, 2.8 million of revenue 
Uh, keep in mind, you borrowed roughly a little bit over eight million during the year, 870,000 went into that fund. That fund had a deficit as of the end of the year of 839,000, but that was an improvement in that deficit from 2.2 million in the previous year. So that uh, the TIF districts from a capital standpoint are moving in a positive direction. And then likewise in the bonded capital projects, 4.8 million of revenue, 4.2 is borrowed money. So most of that is coming through in the form of uh, funding sources. Uh, at the bottom, you'll see the two debt service funds. These are the funds that pay debt service just on city debt. This does not include any utility related debt. Um, 8.6 million of revenue in your GO debt fund. Keep in mind, you refunded debt during the year, so you borrowed 3.6 million, and you paid off 3.6 million through an advance refunding. So came in, went out, that fund added 411,000 to fund balance and had 7.5 million as of the end of the year, all which is restricted for debt service purposes. And then likewise in your uh, TIFs, 5.3 million of revenue, mostly tax increment, they paid uh, their debt, of 4.4 million added almost a million to fund balance. Again, 5.6 of restricted fund balance, all restricted uh, for TIF purposes. That very last column there, this is a summary of all the remaining governmental funds of the city. These are found on page 72, or beginning on page 72 of your audited statements. And these um, include like your uh, cemetery perpetual care fund, your uh, special assessment fund, your ambulance fund, your CDBG, your revolving loans. Those are some of the bigger ones, your municipal court, the marinas included in that um, section also. Those are all combined into that one column. I will just highlight that as you can see under the fund balance section, 2.2 million of deficit. Uh, that is mainly the marina with a small portion being uh, the municipal court as of the end of the year. On the next page, uh, these are the various enterprise funds. So these are the business type activities of the city. Um, I've included the sewer, water, and transit. You can see when you look at the change in that position, that's what you wanna look at. That is whether you, that is a positive or negative. All three of those saw positive uh, additions to net position. Net, fish, net position is similar to fund balance. Fund balance is more a representation of cash, where uh, net position is all your assets less your out liability. Typically, you see that as a positive number because if you think about it, you're capital intensive. So all of those uh, entities have very large fixed assets, lots of equipment, lots of infrastructure. Um, so that number is typically a, a very big number. Uh, just a couple items to note, um, both water and sewer saw a positive increase in customer revenue, um, so positive res results within the revenue section. Operating expenses on the sewer side were um, up roughly 900,000 during the year, but there was um, some significant road projects that required relining of the sewer system, so that increased your costs. Um, so sewer added roughly a million to net position, ended at the year at 26 million, of which 14 million roughly is uh, your investment in capital assets. So that is a number that's reflective of your capital assets, less any associated debt. Water utility did very well, 1.6 million increase in net position compared to roughly a $420,000 increase last year. Uh, the main contributing factor to that was the revenue, uh, million dollar increase in customer revenue. Transit Commission, um, essentially a break-even year. Uh, added a little bit to net, net position that's down from $999,000 increase last year. Um, during the year, uh, you saw a decrease in your intergovernmental revenue, um, also a decrease in your capital contributions, and then uh, likewise, though, your expenses also decreased within transit. So again, uh, ended the year at $6.3 million of net position. Uh, the non-major enterprise funds, these are the remaining funds. So this is your parking, um, your boat, your recycling. Um, those are found on page 97 of your audited statements. Again, very consistent with previous year results. 2.6 million of net position, of which 1.9 million is, infra or is uh, invested in capital assets, roughly a half a million of cash. Uh, the last column there is your internal service funds. So these are the funds that help service the various um, departments of the city. Those are found on page 101 of your audited statements. And again, nothing I need to draw to your attention there. Uh, of the 19 million in uh, net position, uh, those funds in total have over 12.8 million of cash, but those are where your insurance reserves are. So there's um, additional money there for future uh, 
uh, needs there. I will just note, I haven't included in the presentation, but on page 12 of your audited statements are all the cash flow statements. So that uh, shows the cash activity of all those enterprise funds. Um, overall, very positive results uh, within the, the various uh, funds. On the very last page uh, of the handout, I've just highlighted the long-term obligations uh, of the city, the governmental activity column, that's the city. Um, the business type are the enterprise funds, so water, sewer, transit, the, the funds I mentioned previously. Just a couple items to note uh, related to those. Um, your city funds, as I mentioned previously, 8.7 million of new debt. You paid down roughly 8.8 .8 million, so essentially a break even uh, within your debt category. Um, the business type activity saw no new borrowings during the year, so no new utility debt, and they paid down roughly 1.7 million of their associated borrowings. Uh, the important item to note on this page, in my opinion, is that statutory debt limit. Uh, the city can borrow 5% of its equalized value. That equates to roughly $171 million. You had $60.4 million of debt outstanding. You only look at your general obligation debt, so it doesn't factor in the revenue bonds of the utility. So again, when you take that 60 million from the 171, you have a borrowing capacity of roughly 110 million. So a very good portion of your capacity exists for uh, the needs the city may have in the future. Uh, just two other items gonna mention, included in your footnotes, there's two extensive footnotes. One's related to the pension activity, that's on page 47, so that's your participation in WRS. The last is related to your other post-employment benefits. Those are on page 55 and 57. Uh, the city has a small single employer plan that is an OPEB, and then you also participate in the local retirement life insurance fund um, through the state. So again, that is also a uh, footnote that's included in there. So I encourage you to take a look at those, all based on actuarial information that's provided to us as part of the audit process. Uh, lastly, I've included my email, my phone number. Go through this very quickly. Um, and at a very high level, happy to talk with any of you about uh, the process, our uh, audit, uh, what we look at, how we look at it. If you have any concerns or things that you want to bring to our attention, please reach out to me. Happy to have a conversation with any of you um, regarding anything uh, audit or finance related. Uh, at this point, though, I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone may have currently. All right. Thank you, Wendy. Any others have any questions? Alder Perella. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you so much, Wendy. Uh, as you said, it was very fast. <laughs> uh, and I appreciate that you are available in case that we have uh, any questions, right? Um, I was wondering about the actual audit. Um, it, I, I don't find it in the packet. Will we receive it later? It is on the city website, and I, I am available to send it to you via email if you would like it oh, that way okay. as well. No, that's fine, if I, if, if I can find it there. Thank you so much. Additional questions? All right. Sounds good. Right. Well, thank, thank you, Thank you. Wendy. Have a great night. Yeah, appreciate it. All right. Moving on to mayor's announcements. Uh, just a few quick notes uh, for, for folks. Obviously, uh, December has started, so that means alternate side parking is in full effect for tomorrow uh, for uh, the winter season. Um, just a rule of thumb is remember to park for tomorrow, um, uh, rotating between odd and even sides of the street as well. Um, always a lot of festive things going on throughout the community uh, during the Christmas season as well. Our friends at Shoreline Metro have uh, the Jingle Bus uh, which is a magical ride uh, through the uh, on the trolley through making spirits bright and through the downtown and looking at light light displays throughout the community. Um, so join uh, the jingle bus for holiday cheer and some holiday caroling as well. Um, folks are asked to bring a non-perishable food item to be donated uh, through making spirits bright for the Sheboygan County Food Bank as well. So there's a lot of great information on visit Sheboygan's website for that. Um, they also mentioned Making Spirits Bright uh, this year. Um, they're uh, looking for folks to graciously contribute uh, for some non-perishable food items as well. Um, the Food Bank and Making Spirits Bright are, are looking for folks um, to help donate uh, during this holiday season as well. So feel free to uh, check out uh, Making Spirits Bright uh, for more information as well. So um, 
Also, just one quick fun fact uh, uh, for my last announcements. Um, so it's been reported in the press uh, at the most recent state dinner at the White House for the French President uh, Macron, uh, President Biden served cheese uh, that was made uh, in Sheboygan at the state dinner. So I thought that was a fun fact uh, that um, uh, to share as well. So the, it was cheddar cheese from Deer Creek Cheese uh, right here in Sheboygan. So just a fun fact for that. All right, well, we'll be moving on to the consent agenda items 10 through 13. Alder Feldy, is there a motion? Thank you, Mayor. I move and file, I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. It's been a motion. Second. Any items for discussion on the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your meeting code. All right, those items are approved. All right, items 14 and 15 will be referred to the Finance Committee. Next, we have item number 16, resolution number 96 22 23 by older persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski, authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Walmart Real Estate Business Trust versus City of Sheboygan, authorizing payments of said services. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mary. I move to suspend the rules. Any objection? Seeing none, please proceed. I move to adapt the resolution. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Alder Decker. Uh, I just want to make a quick comment. Uh, this is something we've been gone, we've gone through year after year. We're, we're going, you know, we always have to go back. And this is something that I think people need to contact their legislatures about this is something that they, they, that 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 could be handled and taken care of through the, through the legislation and we wouldn't have to be going through this every year we're spending money we're wasting money to do this and uh, so that's all I can say is, is people have to contact their legislatures about this all right thank you older Decker additional comments on this item seeing none this is a roll call vote There are nine eyes. All right, that item is approved. Items 17 through 30 will be referred to um, their respective committees. Next is item 31, report of committee, item number 131, 22, 23 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 92, 22, 23 by elder persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski, authorizing submitting the substantial amendment to U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Community Development Block Grant Housing Program for the 2022 program year for the re revolving loan fund for water and sewer improvements. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adapt the resolution. Second. Motion second. Dis any discussion? Uh, Alder Perella. Yes, I have a question about the, I have to ask a question about this <clears throat> because while I was reading it again, I, it's not clear to me, I'm a little confused. So, um, the CDBG, the $700,000 are from the CDBG program, correct? Yes. So is that is that a grant? It is a grant. Well, the city operates what's called a revolving loan fund, and that revolving loan fund is either for housing rehab or business development. So as we make loans uh, to people to either fix up their houses or start a business and they pay the loans back, we capture that revenue of principal and interest payments in a separate fund. And then that gets reseeded in the CDBG program because it once federal, always federal. So if we use federal dollars to establish the program, it always, it stays as federal dollars. So what we're looking to do, um, 
Caitlin's team, after a number of years, has reconciled the revolving loan fund program and determined that we have a significant amount of fund balance in that fund. So we're looking to reprogram the funds from being used for another loan process uh, into a public infrastructure project to get them out on the street so that the federal government doesn't recapture the funds. Does that mean that we received money from HUD with the CDBG program, which we did not use all of it? Yes and no. So we received money back in 1987 and probably for 10 years when the city used CDBG dollars to establish the fund. So we used our yearly entitlement allocation that we get to build enough money into the fund so we had money to dole, to give to people as part of the, as part of the loan process. The program is self-sufficient now, so there's enough revolving back in from the payback of the loans that we don't have to put any new entitlement money into the program. For entitled money, entitlement money, you mean more money, direct money from HUD? Correct. Okay, so and, and my question is why we we have not been, basically we have access funds. Why have not we been able to use those funds for what the HUD CDBG program is originally intended for? Well, those funds were originally intended for revolving loan funds, to give loans to people. We have still significant balance in there, so once we give out, once we reprogram this 700,000, we still have roughly 600,000 of fund balance in that fund, and we revolve in about three to 400,000 a year. So there will be still funding available to be able to give loans for low-income people, low and moderate-income people to make improvements to their home, or for businesses that are expanding. So there'll be significant funding there, it's just that we don't have a enough of a demand in the local community and we don't have the staffing to get 1.3 million out onto the streets in a timely fashion that's going to meet the requirements of HUD. And so then that is a follow-up question, if I may, is what is that timeline? Well, it's supposed to be January 31st of 2023. And so we are not going to meet, I, I'm not going to get into the, I don't want to get into the specifics and the weeds, but we there's a timeliness calculation that HUD does at the end of January where we're supposed to have spent one and a half times the amount of money that we have in our fund balance, and we're going to exceed that this year. Now, we're hoping that by approving this funding, we'll be able to tell them that we're reprogramming it and we're going to get it on the street next year, um, mid-summer. But Otherwise, other than that, they have the opportunity that we could pay these funds back to the federal government. All right, so again, my only... Uh, it's, Alder, it, Alder yeah. Prelick, the council rules say you can only ask two questions. I allowed you to go over, so... Thank you. Thank you very much. Agreed. Thank you. Additional questions on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your muni code. There are nine eyes. All right, that item is approved. Next item, RC number 132223 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 902223 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Fleet Paneski authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city regarding grievance number 22-1 filed by the International Association of Firefighters Local 483 in authorizing payments for said services. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the IRC and adopt the resolution. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please vote on your muni code. There are nine ayes. All right, that item is approved. Next is item 32, RC number 1. 36 22 23 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 87 22 23 
by the Director of Planning and Development regarding the purchase of 1214 South 11th Street for moving the residential home of another city-owned site in reconstruction of the failing city-owned retaining wall. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the IRC, file the IRO, and authorize staff to issue a letter of intent. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Alder Decker. So where is this house going to be moved to? Do we have what, what lot are we moving it to? Or is it the Director Pelchek? The city owns a lot on Indiana Avenue, kind of across from the Bourbon Street pub. Um, it's a vacant lot there, so we're, we would move it to that location and then put it back on the market and sell it to um, somebody to occupy. Okay, good. Any follow-up? Alder Prella? Just curious, this is not a manufactured home, right? No. No. Thank you. Right. Any other discussion? Alder Feldy. Um, will, will the city have to put in a foundation first before they move that house? Yes, that it, there would have to be a foundation and then a furnace and a water heater that would be then plumbed into the house. Um, that would be all provided as part of that. And per the resolution, that would be, we would use federal uh, community development block grants to fund that improvement and then reimburse the program after we sell the property. Okay, thank you. Just some questions? All right, seeing none, please refer to meeting code to vote. There are nine eyes. All right, item 33 is approved. We've exhausted the agenda. Um, Alder Feldy, is there a motion to adjourn? Absolutely. I move to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. Aye. Any objections? We're adjourned at 6.36. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>